Mr. Boyle is recognized for four minutes. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, this couldn't uh, be a more plain spoken amendment. This amendment is simply called Stop the Shutdown and Honor the Deal. This amendment stops the threat of a government shutdown by restoring the 2024 appropriations to the funding levels that were just agreed to in the Fiscal Responsibility Act of 2023 that passed this chamber in June and the overwhelming majority of our members on this committee voted for, including 15 on the Republican side. It prevents the dangerous cuts envisioned by extreme MAGA House Republicans. Government shutdowns are damaging, costly, and foolish. When Congress fails to do its job, the consequences are real. Families suffer, the economy takes a hit, and government costs rise, all completely unnecessarily. Government shutdowns hobble economic growth. The 2013 Republican shutdown cost our GDP upwards of $6 billion in terms of lost output. It resulted in the creation of 120,000 fewer private sector jobs, and it disrupted private sector lending to individuals and small businesses. Worse yet, uh, shutdowns divert government resources from their intended purpose. Agencies are forced to create shutdown preparation plans and lose substantial worker productivity. That's a wasteful use of taxpayer dollars. In the 2013 shutdown, $2 billion were lost just in work hours alone. The House Spending Committees have written appropriations bills for 2024 that are now $119 billion below the level that the overwhelming majority of this chamber agreed to in the FRA. The cuts required by these levels Amounts that are enshrined in this House Republican budget resolution offer example of example of underinvestment and wrongheaded focus. These cuts eviscerate education, public health, law enforcement, weak and rural communities, and offer a disinterested shrug at the climate crisis. Republican intransigence has stalled the appropriations process and left American families facing the threat of a government shutdown. The flawed bills cutting essential services can't find enough support even among House Republicans to pass them. And that's before the measures would reach a certain doom in the Senate. Again, this budget resolution completely ignores the deal reached and voted on just months ago. And it does it to impose cuts from levels that are just completely unsustainable and unrealistic. It compounds that problem in 2025 and then gets worse and worse as the decade unfolds. As CBO, the nonpartisan Congressional Budget Office wrote in March, Republican plans to balance the budget solely through spending cuts are unrealistic, requiring the complete elimination of most non-defense investments. Put simply, vote for this amendment. Everyone who voted for the budget agreement in June should be supporting this. Vote for Amendment 1, stop this shutdown, and honor the deal. That I yield back. I thank the gentleman, and now would like to ask if there are any members who'd like to claim the time in opposition to the amendment. Mr. Chairman, I ask for five minutes, please. The gentleman from Indiana is recognized. Mr. Chairman, I ask unanimous consent to submit an article from the Cato Institute uh, to the record entitled uh, Return Discretionary Spending to Pre-Pandemic Levels. Without objection, so ordered. Thank you. During World War II, the federal government increased spending to support the war effort, and our debt-to-GDP ratio rose to almost 119% by the conclusion of the war. But after the war ended, Congress took steps to reduce spending back to pre-war, pre-war levels, which was the logical and fiscally responsible thing to do. The proposed $1.471 trillion discretionary spending levels that we include in this budget resolution is a return to pre-pandemic levels. This follows historic precedent, not to mention overall principles of fiscal responsibility. We need to stop constantly res resorting to spending more just because we can. 
out of control government spending and the failed Bidenomics policies have led, have led to the highest inflation we've seen in decades, which in turn led to higher interest rates and cost of living, making it much harder for Americans to provide for their families and plan for their futures. Since the federal government's out of control spending habits have forced my, many of my constituents and all Americans to make tough choices on how they can spend their money, don't you think it's time that we make our own tough choices with regard to how we spend taxpayer money? We need to cut wasteful spending like the IRA's $71 billion in additional IRS funding and $580 billion in student loan bailouts. We're more than $33 trillion in debt. If that isn't a sign that we need to implement serious changes to our spending habits, then I don't know what is. Our proposal provides a strong blueprint for reducing spending while protecting vital government programs. Well, I'd like to thank my esteemed colleague, ranking member, and fellow Notre Dame grad for his amendment. I do urge my colleagues to vote no on this amendment, and I would like to yield the balance of my time to my dear friend and chairman, Mr. Arrington. I thank uh, the gentleman from Indiana. <clears throat> Look, the FRA agreed on a cap. We have not, if we were to go over that cap, we'd violate the law. Uh, it's a ceiling on spending, not a floor, and, and here's what's important, I think. Um, we've got a Senate that's already requesting more than the agreement, so let's be fair to all parties involved. The president, in his budget, requests $90 billion more in discretionary spending year over year, roughly, roughly. I think I have a number here for the next two years at $227 billion more. We have a spending-induced inflationary firestorm. And I don't know about my colleagues, but in West Texas, this is a real cost of living crisis People, seven out of 10, six out of 10, living paycheck to paycheck, losing on average $1,100 a month, it's unsustainable. And so I don't understand how one could argue to spend more money, but that's where the Senate is and that's where the president is. We are saying, let's eliminate anything that's wasteful and unnecessary CBO, nonpartisan, projected that there would be hundreds of billions of dollars less in spending at this point in time pre-COVID. So in their projections, they anticipated we'd be spending hundreds of billions, I think it's over 300 billion. We're talking about 119 billion. I can tell you, in what I've seen, there's a whole lot more wasteful and unnecessary spending. We saw the government grow from 2017 to 2022 by 45%. There were some things we needed to do, some things I thought were unnecessary and some things I thought were not even germane to COVID that were funded in the name of COVID. But we've carried over a lot of waste. The bureaucracy is bloated and we need to get back to pre-COVID, pre-inflationary numbers. It will help the American people they're tightening their belts. They're changing their spending habits. I don't think it's I don't think it's a lot to ask that we put uh, find another 120 billion. I bet there's more in waste in this federal government. So I appreciate the comments uh, on that, but we we reject this amendment out of hand on that basis. Um, and now we got one minute in uh, for rebuttal from my friend, Mr. Boyle. Yeah, so uh, to close my minute, uh, I'm sorry Mr. Yockham left because I was going to uh, take this opportunity for bipartisan agreement with him. I know he will agree with me that Notre Dame will defeat Ohio State uh, this Saturday. Everything else he said, uh, he's nodding his head, right? He, he, I think uh, he agrees with me on that, even if we don't agree on the other uh, matter at hand. I also say, you know, ever since the agreement was reached in June and then subsequently uh, the House Speaker ended up with a, an internal problem with some of the folks who voted no on his side, and the House actually couldn't even <laughs> do business for a full week that followed. Then suddenly this fairy tale was invented that, oh, the the 1%, uh, you know, the cuts that were in there um, are uh, a floor, not a ceiling in terms of what the cuts will be. That is nowhere in the agreement. No one was saying that at the time it passed. But now, suddenly, to solve a, an in, 
internal party strife issue, this sort of fairy tale has come about. Let's stick with the original agreement that passed the House, passed the Senate, and was signed into law. That is what the ultimate resolution of this is going to look like. This amendment honors our deal. Thank you. I yield back. I thank the ranking member. The question's now in agreeing to his amendment as offered. And uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, no? No. Well, in the opinion of the chair, the no's have it. Um, uh, and we will be asking for a recorded vote, uh, which I believe will be at a, a later time when we do correct. that consecutively. We, that's right. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, roll call vote is requested, but pursuant to our agreement, um, we will postpone all recorded uh, votes till after the markup. And I appreciate that uh, bipartisan yeah. um, agreement. So here we go. Next one. 